welcome to our third instalment of um, the sessions that we're doing for um, for pet parties. Now today we're going to be talking about ferrets, and here we've got George. Um, I will get Fred out later, um, but this this ferret here is George. Um, so the ferrets that we've got, they're both males. So they have um, they have had um, at the snip to allow them to get on. And we'll show you a close up of him. This is George and he is a male ferret, he's a polecat ferret. Okay, now these guys come to our party, so they're very tame, um, but the only reason that they are as tame as they are is because they enjoy the ferret paste that we let them um, lick during the parties. Um, now, this session is going to um, primarily surround um, the questions that have been sent in. Um, and in our evenings, um, myself and, and my wife do cubs, and one of our cubs has sent in quite a few questions. So um, this evening's um, session will surround Ruby's questions from First Woodville um, cubs, um, and quite a few other questions that have come in um, as well. So um, Ruby asks, how long a ferret lives? Now these guys are currently about three years old and they can live between six and ten years. Um, then she also goes on to ask where ferrets originate from. Now ferrets are um, domesticated, so ferrets don't tend to um, live in the wild, um, although escaped ferrets can live quite well. Um, these guys are domesticated European polecats. I'm just going to pop him, um, him down a second. Now, um, in the wild they would, um, they would live quite happily um, because they don't lose their natural instinct to hunt um, very easily. Now um, ferrets are carnivorous mainly, they, um, they feed on meat but in captivity this can make them a little bit bitey which for what we do isn't a good, a good idea. So to answer um, one of Miss Gillan's um, children's questions from Lapple Primary School, yes ferrets do bite, um, as I found out to my cost when these guys were kits, which is the name of a baby ferret. Um, so these guys do bite, they have very very strong teeth, which once um, George has finished licking this, um, I will try and show you his teeth. Now you may be able to see in the video he's shaking, it isn't because he's cold, He's just trying to warm himself up. He's actually considerably warmer than I am. Um, Fred and George routinely sit and snuggle in their beds, um, which is basically a big burrow of, um, of bed sheets and fleet blankets and things like that. And they get extremely warm. Um, even when it snowed a couple of years ago, these guys were like little hot water bottles. So, one of the questions that Ruby's has asked is what do these guys eat? What's their favorite food? So. In the wild, they went well. European polecats would eat um, animals. They would hunt um, various different rodents, um, possibly even a chicken. Um, they would hunt quite big prey. In captivity, you can raw feed them, um, which we did attempt to do, but they became bitey and nippy. Um, but now we feed them ferret kibble, which is better for their teeth because it keeps their teeth quite strong. Um, it also means that they're more like kittens um, than, than ferrets. Um, I'll try and see if I can show you their teeth. So, if I hold his scruff, support his bum, he should yawn. And there you can see his teeth. He's got very strong, pointy canine teeth, and then quite small um, teeth on his back. Now that doesn't hurt him. Um, it allows us to do our checks to make sure his teeth are nice and healthy. Another question that, um, that Ruby's asked is how long um, does ferrets or how long do ferrets need for walking? Um, ferrets are they're quite energetic but only in small bursts. So it's recommended that their walk should be no longer than between 5 and 10 minutes. I'll let them jump off. Um, so that you don't overexert their muscles. Um, Different types of ferrets, we don't really know. Um, a ferret is a ferret and their, their look is purely based on their, um, their, their coat. Um, there are 
not really different types of ferrets because they're domesticated um, and they interbreed so easily. Um, we can't really put a, a pinpoint on how many different types of ferrets there are. Now these guys make absolutely fantastic pets, um, but they are very inquisitive. They never sit still, as you can see. You might see pictures on Facebook of ferrets that um, are being cuddled and stroked and loved. We would love these guys to just sit still, but they never do. Um, this is probably as still as these guys will sit, mainly because if he moves, he's going to fall off. Um, and they're not stupid pets, they are really, really clever. Um, which means that they need quite a lot of enrichment. So in their enclosure, they've got um, lots of pipes to crawl through. They've got lots of different levels um, to sit at. And they've got a big bed for them to snuggle up in. Um, they're best um, in groups, mainly so that they've got the social interaction. Because, as I say, they do get very, very bored very, very quickly if they're not um, socially active. Um, one other question that uh, Miss Gillen's group has asked is where these guys lie on the food chain. I'm going to let George just sit up there for a second. Now, these guys are consumers, i.e. they consume things. They're not producers. Um, so hopefully in class you guys will have been doing something on um, the food chain. So I'll show you this. So, ferrets are secondary consumers. So you can see producers on the bottom. And these are the green um, vegetation, which are eaten by primary consumers. Um, and then ferrets sit on the secondary consumers. Now they could be classed as top predators, um, but they are eaten by things. So big birds of prey might predate on them. Bigger cats, things like that in the wild um, would, would predate on the ferrets. Um, what habitats do they like to live in? So this is going back to European polecats now as opposed to ferrets. They would live in fields, they'd live in hedgerows, they'd live by rivers. They're very um, adaptable animals, um, so they can live almost anywhere. Um, and one of the last questions that uh, Miss Gillen's group has asked is why do they have different teeth? And the reason that they have different teeth, um, sorry, different teeth to us, is because primarily their diet is different. So, in order to eat raw meat, because the meat that they would eat in the wild would be raw, they have to have the pointy teeth to puncture, they have to be able to hunt, um, I'll let him jump back down again. Um, so they need those teeth in order to eat the food that um, they would hunt, they would catch. Now as you've just seen, I've given him um, a couple of pellets of kibble and he's taken them and hidden them um, under his house. Um, they're quite shy um, animals in the way that they eat and that's again based on the nature of the, of the ferret. Okay. So, with regards to the ferrets, that concludes everything that we, uh, we want to cover on them. Our next video will be covering the blue tongue skink and the Berber skinks. Um, as I said in our tortoise video at the beginning of the week, please make sure you get um, your questions into us no later than Monday at 3 o'clock. Send them into our Facebook page, um, onto our emails, um, petpartiesltd at outlook.com, um, or just message them um, straight on the bottom of the post um, that we're going to post shortly. Um, again, just to reiterate, we will be working closely with any families affected um, that should have had parties during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, and we'll work closely to rearrange those parties shortly. If you've got any other questions or queries, um, please drop us a message um, and we will be in contact with you. Thank you and stay tuned. Bye.